Good day. So we are on our way to Manchester. Um, quite excited actually. I'm going to have my van tuned. Um, so my VW Crafter is a 108 brake horsepower. I don't think I've owned a vehicle up to 300 brake horsepower for the last 15 years. Um, anyway, it's not about performance, or it is, but it's not about speed, it's about miles per gallon. So I'm gonna have a stage one tune, which to my understanding gives me approximately 14 miles per gallon more efficiency on average. I think my van will probably get more than that because it doesn't perform very well. Actually, it's not too bad, but I haven't got a lot of weight in my van. So I'm, I'm currently on 26.8 miles to the gallon. So if you haven't got a van, you've probably just had a heart attack. If you have got a van, and in particular a VW Crafter or a Sprinter, you're probably thinking, why are you getting a tune? That's pretty good. Yeah, it's not too bad. I can actually get, if I use BP Ultima, I can get about 33, 34 miles per the gallon. But if somebody's going to save me 14% uh, on the price of fuel, which effectively is what, I don't know, a 30p saving per litre, and I know I'm rubbish at maths, so don't, I've just literally come up with that in my head, so don't get your calculator out and go, what the hell's he talking about? Um, it's it's going to make a massive difference. Uh, in two days I drive down to Switzerland, so if I'm going to save 14% on my fuel bill, that's a lot of money. It's a hell of a lot of money. So let's nip in and see these guys, hopefully they're okay with the camera, and uh, yeah, I'll try and get them to talk through what they're doing and then um, let's see what the outcome is. Oh, before we do go any further, so I'm averaging 25.9 miles, 26 miles to the gallon basically. Um, that's over traveling down on the motorway, backwards and forwards, through the peak district, through the towns, etc. etc. So, and I haven't drove it um, really carefully, I just thought I'd just drive it normally. So, that's what I've done. Right, I need to work out where I'm going next if I can get off the motorway. How do you feel about that? Crazy. <laughs> Get me out of this horrendous traffic network of a country. guys i'm not sure if you can see me um i'm being quiet because we're in a, like a public car park um so try not to make too much noise although it is windy outside and the sea's crashing against the wall next to us it's um 26 minutes past midnight i've just sorted the van out um we tried to get into the channel tunnel um because one of my friends advised me that you could get in early and crash in the car park overnight obviously you could a while ago but they've locked down on it so that's not allowed anymore, so we got kicked straight out. And um, well, we didn't get kicked out, we just got told we couldn't do that, so we just got sent through the exit and back out again. He said, Come back in the morning, he's pretty, pretty nice about it. The guy, um, so yeah, just have to crash down here. It's only six minutes, and there's a BP garage where I want to go in the morning anyway, so um, that's en route back there. So it's all win, it's all a win. Um, it took us forever to get down here because, well. We're in England, aren't we? Let's be honest. Don't need to explain the traffic. 
So Amika's in a new bed down, down there. We haven't got the covers on yet because we've just run out of energy and time, haven't we? How is it? Is it all right? Mm -hmm. It's a lot better, isn't it? We've gone back to the bunk system again now. So anyway, I am extremely tired. I think I set off at quarter to two and got here at midnight. So yeah, a long time. I don't even know how many hours that is because my brain stopped working about three hours ago. Right, I'm getting into bed and... Um, yeah, I'm going to set the alarm nice and early, get up, have something to eat, and then go to France. See you in the morning. over those rock dunes, pebble dunes, is where we're parked. Perfect night's sleep in the car park. So up nice and early, I've got about 10 minutes to spare, so I just thought I'd just come down here and have a look. Interesting thing, just over that hill in the background, I've actually stayed many times in an army camp. I can't remember the name of the barracks, but it's basically just a place to crash for the night. I think just round that corner over there is Hive Firing Rangers where I've spent many of weeks in an attitude. Right, there's the van. Good job, savage dogs everywhere. Enough seat <laughs> because really, really, really tired. <laughs> but to be fair, neither of us have had a lot of sleep, have we? So, We've had about six or five hours. Yeah, not great. Not great when you've got to be traveling till probably well, if we go all the way down to Switzerland or France, basically the Alps, wherever we decide to actually go, um, we're going to be traveling it until probably about 10 o'clock UK time, 11 o'clock France time, or Switzerland time. Too tired to play on computer though, are you? No. Right, let's go. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thanks. Bye bye. <laughs> she was embarrassed because she saw the camera recording. Just like, yeah, take my job. Okay. Perfect, thanks a lot. There's a nice little white horse there. Do you want some of these red grapes? No.
How do you like that white horse? It's awesome. I'm just um, having some grapes for breakfast, trying to get myself into a French mode. Because my windscreen might start starting to rain. Weird, aren't they, under that colour? Not like painted, it's just like raw metal. Must be, maybe they get damaged. If... Maybe, I don't know, I'm just thinking it might be sea salt under the ground, but I don't know if there is. There would be a reason why they've done it like that. Just like it. Turn off headlights, how am I supposed to do that? Whoa, there's another train, I want to be on a cool train. Well, we made it onto the train, as you can tell. And <laughs> we are on here for 35 minutes, for those that don't know, that's how long it takes. Um, there's a bit of faffing around, you've got to get everybody on and all that sort of stuff. So it doesn't take too long, there's nothing like getting a ferry or getting a plane. Um, and then, yeah, I'm not really sure what the plan is. I'd like to just get straight down to as far south as possible. Yesterday we were in the van as expected, but unfortunately not as quick as what it should have been, if that makes sense. So I expected it was going to take forever because it's Friday and Easter holidays. So I'm not sure what the plan is today. Um, we spent a long time in the van yesterday. It's kind of expected because it's half term. No, it's not half term, it's Easter. Yeah, just chaos. The roads are just chaos. And then, I don't know, there was a big smash on the M25 that just wrote everything off anyway. So the plan is to get down to the Alps today. Um, but that said, I don't particularly want to be sat constantly in a vehicle for absolutely forever um, because it feels like that's what I did yesterday. So we'll see how we get on. Although driving in France is a lot easier. It's less stressful than what it is driving in the UK. So we'll see how far we can get. I don't mind if we stop, you know, two hours short and then do that in the morning. That's fine with me, get up into mountains in the morning. But if we can get all the way down there, the problem is we're getting all the way down there in one go. It's going to be pitch black when we arrive. It's not a problem arriving in the dark, um, but I'd like to actually see the Alps as we pull up rather than just black. Anyway, I'm waffling. I'm going to get in the back now and get my breakfast because I've not had anything and it's half past nine. And we're off, <laughs> just like that. So we'll see you in France. Bonjour, mon ami. So, we're making good progress because uh, we're in France and there's no traffic anywhere. Where are we going? Why are we going there? And what are we going to do? So, we're going to Germany via France, Switzerland, Liechtenstein, Austria, and maybe Italy. So, by the time we've got to Germany, we'll be on six countries, and then when we go back, we're going to go through Holland and Belgium. So, yeah, oh, I just nearly went into the wrong lane because I'm in the wrong country. Why are we going now? Well, we're taking Amika to see a mum in Germany. She's not seen a mum since September last year. And it's obviously April now. Yeah, we'll probably spend six or seven days with Amika's mum. But prior to that, we're going to go the long way around because why not? So the plan is to get down to Chamonix today, hopefully. Spend, I don't know, I don't even know what the plan is to go with, but basically you spend some time there, whether it's a day, two days, I don't know. Um, then over to Grindelwald, Grindelwald, I'm not sure how you say that, but um, which is where the Eiger is. So Mount Blanc first, then over to the Eiger. Um, hopefully, hopefully we can see some wingsuiters or base jumpers. Um, I don't know whether they jump in these conditions because it's pretty cold down there. Um, I would really like to be there on Tuesday because on Tuesday the temperature is going to drop significantly. So I think the likelihood of seeing any base jumpers is going to be pretty low. Now 
Now he was thinking about getting the train to the top, onto the glacier, um, but for me, a return ticket, bear in mind this is just going from halfway up the mountain to the top, is 187 of their money, whatever that money is, which is about 150 quid. Um, so by the time you put a meter on there, it's about 200 quid for a, a return ticket, which, all right, yeah, it's one of those sort of things that if you pass them by is once in a lifetime, well, it certainly is at that cost anyway. Um, if you don't know, I can't remember the name of it, I'll stick it up, but um, it was featured in one of the James Bond films, so you've probably seen that. So that's, that would be, it would be really nice to go up there. Um, maybe we can hide, like hide in the luggage section and nobody will find us. Then after that, we've got a decision. We either go back and go round to Italy. Um, so on the Tuesday, it's going to get down between, well, temperatures are varying on different apps, but between about minus 14 and minus 25. So fingers crossed we can get some seriously cold temperatures. And wait for this. If we drop down through the Alps, through the tunnels, and go into Italy, as we pass through to go towards Lake Como, there's a the name of a town again, I can't remember of it. Something to begin with Ben. Um, and the forecast for Wednesday is 26 degrees. So from minus 24 to 26 degrees, a big, ma like a massive difference. Um, so they kind of through Lake Co Como, it depends how we're doing for time. Um, we could then push on a little bit further east and then hit the Dolomites and come back up through the Dolomites, uh, through Austria, hang over to New Schwanstein Castle, which is somewhere where I've always wanted to go uh, from a very young age. And then into Germany. But anything could happen. Anything, anything, anything could happen. Anything could happen. Well, literally anything could happen. As you know from a previous video, I had the van remapped. Now I averaged, just by driving like I am now, between 26 and 27 miles per gallon in the UK. I'm currently sitting at 33.8 and I'm doing 59 miles an hour. If I include yesterday's journey, today's journey I've done 397 miles and I'm averaging 31.6 miles to the gallon now I've actually got bigger wheels on than what the speedo thinks so my miles per gallon is actually more than that on top of that so anyway going back to the remapping yeah all it's done is it's told things when to move and when to do this and that and, and it's made my engine more efficient and more powerful now I could have had it even more powerful if I wanted to uh, but what that would have done is it would have made it less efficient. So I've gone for fuel economy because it's a van that's heavy, it's not a high performance car. I'd rather be more economical, I can just sit on these roads, cruise along and uh, save a little bit of money on the way. Anyway, let's carry on. Let's find somewhere to stop in the next hour or so to get some food on the go. Air fry for the win. I actually bought it just for junk food from Ica. I didn't realize you could cook literally everything in it. So um, we've got like this little salad dish of just stuff that we bought. Um, and I just thought, oh yeah, I'll put a naan bread in it and see what happens or flatbread. Yeah, and of course, anybody who's got an air fryer is probably going, what do you think was gonna happen? Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so I've got a hot bread and salad. Right, we're not stopping, we're getting back on the road. So I'm gonna smash this and carry on. By the way, I think we're gonna to go to Geneva because I quite fancy parking up and going for a little run around the lake. Not all the way around, because it's quite big. But um, that'd be pretty cool and get a meter on the bike. Do you reckon? Yeah, fancy that? Mm -hmm. Come on, let's go. Right, quick stop. I've just refilled with a coffee and yeah, a double double espresso, so four shots of coffee that should get me going for the next four hours. And then we're going, uh, yeah, hopefully we get to Geneva. Now, I don't know if to go the main route in or the hilly way, obviously, it makes more sense to go to the hilly way, right? So I think that's what we might do. Um, although I don't particularly want to go on the toll roads because you've got to get one of those tickety things for your window and they're like 40 euros, I think. So, because I'm only going to be there for a day or two, it's pointless. These French roads are killing me as well. The tolls are ridiculous. Anyway, let's carry on.
broken down. Uh, totally broken down and stuck. I need recovery. Alternator's just blown. We need to get that thing out. Switched up. No, the alternator's gone. Uh, We're broken down properly. Right. Right. <laughs> Disaster. <laughs> so we're not going to Geneva today. Um, or maybe tomorrow. We might have to wait till Monday because my auxiliary belt was just broken. What a nightmare. So this guy has just pulled up next to us in some sort of chicken and pig chicken and pig van or something. <laughs> Didn't speak a word of English, but I jumped out, showed him the belt. He found somebody up. Um, and he said, uh, I think his words were Monsieur Arrive gar Garage uh, Un Kilometre. So I think he's going to, I think he found a guy from the garage and said, Can you help this guy out? Um, and then, yeah, perhaps he's going to come and save the day. But not... <laughs> if I'm honest, I haven't got a clue what's going on. I haven't got a clue. No oh, one's got a God. clue. Anyway, it is what it is. So. Let's deal with the problem. Let's fix the problem. And if we can't fix it, we're just gonna have to crash in this car park for a few days. Goodbye, friend. Thanks for your help. Right, so garage man turned up. Um, we use Google Translate to speak to each other. And he said he can fix it, but he has to order the part in, and that's gonna be Monday. Obviously, it's Saturday evening, so it's a bit of a wait, and everywhere else is closed. So there's not really many options apart from just to hang around until Monday, which is a bit of a pain, really, because it means I lose a day, but it is what it is, isn't it? It's part of uh, owning a vehicle and things going wrong, I suppose. Yeah, so I, I, the problem is I can't drive the van because there's all sorts of things that are connected to that belt, such as the power steering. And a water pump, which cools the, helps cool the engine down, and eventually the battery will die because obviously it's not being um, driven anymore by the alternator. Don't ask me how I've done this. I am literally in the middle of nowhere, and the place that I pulled into is one of two places in this whole town where you can actually stay, um, and this is the only place that you can stay overnight. So that is a, just a complete spot of luck. I just headed to the biggest supermarket because I thought it would be the most people here. So yeah, a bit of a pain. As you can see, my battery is currently on 11.4 volts. If I was to start my engine now, um, not a lot will happen with that. Obviously, what should happen is it should go up to about 13.1 volts, and that's what happens. So nothing happens. So I could drive it a little bit more. I could get to the next town where the VW garage is, but then I've got to try and find somewhere to park, and without power steering, it would just be a nightmare. So... Looks like we're in the supermarket for two nights. So this is where we are for the next 36 hours or so. There's a car garage behind here that fixes cars. Um, that building over there fixes cars. There's a Suzuki garage. There's about five or six garages all here. So hopefully one of these guys can fix it. If not, I have to make sure that the van battery is charged and then drive into Goal, which is 13 kilometers to the VW garage and definitely get it done there. Um, but yeah, I can't do nothing um, now. And on top of that, we've just decided to go to the supermarket and it's bloody closed till Monday morning. It's Saturday night. Monday morning? Monday morning. Yeah. Right, let's watch out for dog crap. Dog poo, I mean. <laughs> and. Uh, Let's get the air fryer on the go. <laughs> oh yeah, baby! We need, we need to, we need to uh, get the morale boosted because it's pretty low. It's pretty low. And there's our coloured painted van. Yeah, just watch you, bud. <laughs> Let's get some food on the go. Right, so I'm going to try and work out which belt has gone before having to take off the cover. In fact, I can actually see down. I didn't realise I could see so far down. So there is still some belts on. Maybe I can see from underneath. So if the alternator belt's okay, the voltage will have gone up 
and it hasn't. It's actually gone down. See, there's definitely one belt. I can see one of the belts. Um, I think that's the belt that's on the fan belt. That's driving the fan belt. So that's probably the fan belt then, isn't it? I just don't know the diagrams. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> right. It looks like three belts, of the, all three belts have been damaged. So that belt is the outside belt and the two inside belts are absolutely destroyed. Yeah, so there's all the other pulleys, look. So we're going nowhere. We are going nowhere. Let's get over this side a bit. Oh God. looking for any other damage it doesn't look like anything's damaged it just looks like the belts have just thrown themselves off so that's at least we know what's wrong